So when I actually woke up this morning, I planned on taking a totally different direction with this video. But then I arrived at the shop, I did some exploring, and yeah. So most shotguns are not drop safe. Now let me explain to you why. See, originally when I was going to shoot this video, I was going to explain that older shotguns used to be shot to the point to where the parts literally wore out. So it wasn't that it wasn't drop safe, because this is drop safe. An old Winchester Model 97, drop safe. And I assumed most modern shotguns were. And then I was going to make the video explain, you know, once a shotgun wears out to a certain point, that if you were to drop it, yeah, it's very possible for the hammer to drop. Now, I've seen a bunch of videos on this topic, and what they're arguing is that other firearms have a free-floating firing pin, and because those are drop safe, shotguns, because they have a free-floating firing pin, they're also drop safe. Unfortunately, they're attacking the wrong issue. Indentation on the firing pin. Uh, what that means is that these weapons would not have fired in those conditions. Um, if you're unsure what a floating firing pin is, is a firing pin that isn't held in place by any sort of spring. The issue, like for example, this AR-15 has a free floating firing pin, and this is in fact drop safe, but that's not what makes it drop safe. An AR-15 has a dual catch hammer. So let's say I'm holding the trigger, the firearm cycles, there's a catch that hooks it on the back, and then I let go, and it goes to the primary catch. So no matter what, Without this trigger being pushed to the rear, I cannot release the catch. Which means no matter how hard I throw this in any single direction, this hammer cannot drop without the trigger being pulled to the rear. AR-15, notice it cannot go on safety with the hammer up. I don't think this is definitive proof to decide whether or not a firearm is or is not drop safe. But if you can put it on safety with the hammer forward, I would probably wager it's not drop safe. Notice how the hammer's got one lock here. Let me get a pointer. It's got one lock right here, and then it's got another lock right here. This is for trigger reset. Let's see if I can show it at a better angle. That resets the trigger, and then when you let go of the trigger, it goes into the primary lock. When you put it on safe, it is absolutely not possible for this hammer to drop without this trigger being pulled to the rear. So, here is a Remington Model 870 trigger group. Notice it is on safety. This is your hammer right here. I can trip the hammer. Why can I do that? Why can't I do it on an AR-15? This does not have a dual catch system. This uses a single catch, and then they put a spring right there on the catch. So when the hammer comes down, remember this is still on safety, the trigger's absolutely not moving. See how the hammer catch springs back, and then it locks onto the hammer. This is your compressing spring right here. That's even less. This is probably like three or four pounds of force. Definitely don't butt smash anything with a Remington 870. Now the Remington, it would need a rearward thrust. So say for example, um, a bunch of commies run into the house and I take them down and there's one still alive and I go to butt smash them with my Remington 870, that downward force going on the butt, if I were to do it just right, I would also give myself a skylight at the same time I butt smash them. Now a Mossberg's a little bit different. Oh, what is this trigger group out of? This is out of a 500. Now basically how the safety works, pushes up right here, this is your safety rod, and then on the receiver you have a tang that pushes forward that prevents this from going up. So I'm gonna put my thumb on this to simulate the safety. The trigger group cannot go to the rear. and I just drop the hammer without the trigger moving. Same thing, they don't use a dual claw trigger system. It's only a single claw with a spring on it. This little bar right here is spring fed. I'll do close ups and just roll them in. So if this bar were to scoot forward, 
for whatever reason, I harpoon the barrel into something at just the right velocity, or let's say the Mossberg's in my trunk, the Mossberg's pointed forward, and I get into a head-on collision with another car, my Mossberg very well could discharge. It could <laughs> send a shotgun shell right through the front of the car. And you need to be aware of the different systems and how they work. This way, say, I do want to run around in the pipe in my car with a Mossberg. Obviously, I want to make sure the barrel's pointed in a safe direction. I don't want the barrel to point, be pointed directly forward or directly rear. Because otherwise, if my car gets hit in the rear, it could set off my Mossberg if my barrel's pointed at the rear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting over a really bad cold. Same with the 930. This is your trigger, how it works. This is your spring. Because that spring is there and this is only a single catch hammer, this Mossberg 930 is not drop safe. Uh, which direction would this have to go? So with the Mossberg 930, it would be a rearward force. You'd have to butt smash something really hard to set that one off. Let's take a look at another shotgun. Here's a Weatherby. Notice it's a dual hook hammer. There's one in the front for trigger reset, or one in the rear for trigger reset, and then one in the front that catches it. This is the same as like an AR-15 trigger. This hammer is drop safe on this particular Weatherby. I can't even cock the hammer with it on safety. With it on safety, it is not possible for this hammer to drop. This is completely drop safe. You could do whatever you wanted with this Weatherby and you never have to worry about it discharging. <laughs> My Winchester Model 97 has an external hammer. I can put it forward in half cock. That weapon is drop safe. <coughs> this is really hard to demonstrate because the trigger resets so quickly. I'll try to shoot this in a high frame rate and then show it to you in slow motion. But right there, see how the trigger jumped forward? That's the trigger falling in. It works similar to a weather beat. A raised area on the safety prevents the trigger from being pulled when the safety is engaged. You can't even put it on safety if the hammer's been tripped. Now watch the trigger, you'll see it jump forward. Right there, the trigger just fell into the groove. Bolt travels rearward, the hammer is cocked. Move. Safety can be put on. There's absolutely no way this firearm can discharge now with the safety on it unless these parts were just plain wore out. Now let's say you're holding the trigger. It's got an auto sear in there. Same principle as a machine gun. So then it would set off the round once the pump's all the way forward. But if this was on safety, this would not be possible to fire. It absolutely cannot discharge while it's on safety, unless of course this is crazy worn out. You gotta understand with these older shotguns, that's very possible. I mean, if this shotgun could speak and it watched one of those 5,000 test videos and the guy's like, oh, congratulations, it made it into the 5,000 round club, this would be like, dude, until like, the late 60s, I was on a diet of about a thousand rounds a year. A 5,000 round club. I've had just about every single part in this shotgun replaced. I've had the receiver rewelded. I've had new wood furniture. Try 50,000 rounds. And we'll see if you're talking. So with <coughs> the older ones, they are definitely drop safe. You know, the Winchester line. The Weatherby line, that's drop safe. I'd have to go through each individual shotgun and look at the fire control to know if that was drop safe. But your main shotguns that you're probably going to run into, Remington or Mossberg, no, those are not drop safe. But anyways, I was just hoping to get this video out there to correct some of the misinformation because I've seen like a hundred videos where they're trying to prove that shotguns are drop safe by slamming them into the ground to get the firing pin to go forward and that's not what you're having happen. It's not the firing pin going forward that's setting off the cartridge. It's the hammer being tripped that sets off the cartridge. That's what makes the shotgun not drop safe. But the sear is going to let go of the hammer. The hammer is going to be driven forward and what drives it forward is a 
spring-loaded plunger. So here's the spring and here's the plunger. And the plunger comes up underneath the hammer, driving it forward into the firing pin, which in turn strikes the primer and the base of the shell, igniting the shell and sending the shot down the barrel. So what should your takeaway be from this video? One, most shotguns are not drop safe. Two, a shotgun tipping over like this in your house is not gonna set it off. It takes a very deliberate movement. Depending on the design and the fire control, it's usually an extreme acceleration to the rear with a sudden stop, or an extreme acceleration forward with a sudden stop. Four, if you're gonna use these in your car, and you do feel the need to have a round in the chamber, you should look at the fire control, figure out which way it would have to be to set it off, and position it in your car accordingly. Say this was a Mossberg 500, the safest way to store this in your car would be straight up, because the only way you could get this to go off by, you know, breaking the drop safe rule would be if your car was inverted, and it fell from an extreme distance on its roof and came to a sudden stop, in which case the firearm would discharge. If this was this particular 930 or Remington 870, the safest way to store it in your car is straight upside down. Because again, then the only way you could set it off is if your car was spun upside down and landed on the roof really hard. No matter what side your car takes a hit from, it would not set off a Mossberg or an 870 as long as they're pointed straight up and down. This particular Mossberg would require a force coming across the receiver at this kind of an angle. So just know your shotgun. You really shouldn't be afraid of them falling down inside your house and going off because that's not the way it would go off because that would be a force pushing up against the receiver like this. And I haven't found any shotguns that require a force pushing up against the receiver like this, or like this, or like this to set it off. It's always forces going this way, or this way, and at a slight angle. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can always click on my little Patreon link right there. Or you can go in the description, I got affiliate links, where you can go to Amazon and buy shit you were already going to buy anyway. But if you go to Amazon off my link, I get a little percentage of the sale because I sent you there. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. Don't forget to subscribe.